Hello. Today we're going to learn how to load a 35 millimeter camera with black and white film. First of all, we're going to take the, the camera, make sure that it doesn't have any film in it. So we're going to rotate this rewind lever, lever, make sure it's free flowing. If there is no resistance, then there's no film inside. So we're going to open it up. On this particular camera, it has a lock, and then you pull out the lever, and it'll pop open the camera body. All right. I prefer holding the camera body against my body with the door away. Next, I'm going to grip the film with my thumb and forefinger by the tongue, okay? Film has a little tongue here. I'm going to put it into the groove. So the film goes into the groove. I'm going to use my thumb to hold down the film, pull it away, and then slide it ever so slightly into the camera body. As long as the sprockets are, uh, are the, the little sprocket holes, going through the sprocket holes, then we're going to be good to go to advance it one time. All right, we've advanced it once. As long as the film is still in the groove, then we're good to go as far as closing the camera body. We're going to advance it three times until we have our film advance counter on number one. Okay, you want to make sure that you start at number one so that uh, that you have um, all of your access film uh, loaded into the camera. Next thing you need to realize is your camera has uh, both shutter speed and aperture controls. All right, your shutter speed is right here. Most pictures you start around 60th of a second, and your aperture is going to be variable depending on the amount of light. If you were going to go outside, you can mostly, most likely get a faster shutter speed for action, like 250th, 500th, or 1,000th of a second. If you're going to be taking pictures um, of landscapes and things like that, you're going to want your aperture setting to be smaller, but the number here is going to be an f22, f16, f11. This will allow for a greater depth of field. And so if you're trying to get aperture settings uh, or a depth of field that's greater for landscapes, that, that's great. Um, action shots, you're going to probably end up with aperture settings of like f4 or f5.6. All right, uh, a couple things about your camera that you should be aware of. It has a light meter. When you look inside your, your camera, when you have your, your finger slightly pressed on the shutter, it will engage your light meter so that it allows um, your light to travel through the lens and determine if, if you have the right exposure. If you're indoors, your exposure is going to be probably close to um, an aperture of 2.8, f2.8, with a shutter speed of 60. If you are not going to go outside, you're going to have to use a, a, a tripod. Your shutter speeds are going to be lower, like 1 30th, 1 15th. But when you go outside, your shutter speeds will probably increase to 2 50th or higher. When you are trying to read your light meter, uh, you'll see a, a, a minus sign or a plus sign or a red circle or a circle that indicates that it's right on. Um, some of the, uh, the Vivitars will have a green circle, whereas the Snicon will have a red circle. But the circle indicates that you have the right exposure, whereas a minus sign means you have too little light, and, and a plus sign means you have too much light. And so you can adjust your aperture setting until you get just the right exposure. With some experience, um, you will be able to not only control technically your camera, but also creatively control with shutter speed and aperture. Have fun practicing your camera skills, and uh, have a good day.